there. Okay. Good morning and welcome back to Caesars Superdome in the main interview room. Uh, player breakouts are currently underway with Villanova student athletes and we're going to have head coach Jay Wright join us here in the main interview room in just a few moments. Today, head coaches and player interviews will take place here in the main interview room as well as player interviews in the breakout areas. Like I mentioned, Villanova player breakouts are underway right now. Coach Wright will join us in just a few moments for 10 minutes of Coach Wright by himself up here in the main interview room. Then we'll be joined by Jermaine Samuels, Colin Gillespie, and Caleb Daniels. Right now we have one customer. It's quantity, not quality. Yeah, I, I thought I climbed the ladder pretty well for that one. What's that? I didn't think you were actually going to throw it. And then there's always, you know, I'm not much of a, uh, when not in the formal business attire, I'm not much for wearing, you know, belts and tucked in and stuff like that. So, yeah. My, my limited athleticism is even more hampered by the, uh, the tuck. But, but made a play there. Two weeks ago, I caught a fighter when he fell out of the ring. Like, went right through the ropes. I caught him by the shoulders. He was going to definitely crash onto the ground. So my athleticism is slowly but surely redeeming itself. When put to the, to the, to the trial, I'm ready to go. So the head coach of the Villanova Wildcats, Jay Wright, will be here in just a few moments. Good morning, Pete. Coach Wright is making his way here to the media room. Good morning, Coach. It's me again. Are you still with Team Seven? No. Where are you now? I started um, 
like streaming production and announcer business, like a little media startup eight yeah. years ago. Cool. Yeah, I'm announcing for the Wizards now, for Army football, wow. Yankee Stadium soccer. It's oh, more, football's cool. it's like less game notes and record keeping and record books and more events, which is, that's, that's was always good for you, man. Good yeah, for you. It's, it's good. And plus like uh, flexibility because <coughs> you got two little kids. Hey, AZ. Good, buddy. You get two little kids, so it's much more flexible than, you know, being on the, on the road. There's enough travel. So, you know. We're joined now by head coach Jay Wright from Villanova. Coach, you want to give us a couple thoughts this morning, and then we'll open it up to questions. Sure. Uh, we, we had a, a, another good practice today. I feel like we're, we're in a good place, um, you know, w with replacing Justin. Um, I, I think... Um, you know, just watch it more and more of Kansas. I'm just so impressed with their with their team speed, their their intelligence defensively, and um, and their execution in dead ball situation. Just um, you know, I mean, Bill's a Hall of Fame coach, so it it shouldn't it's not a surprise, but it's just still cool to to watch their their execution and intelligence. And I and I think um, we're going to have to play extremely intelligent, tough against them, uh, and, and I think we're ready to do it. We'll start taking <laughs> questions for Coach Wright, front right side of the room, Zach. Brazil or New York Post. Jay, do you have to do anything with these guys to make them believe they can win, the win this, this weekend? You know, you're probably the underdog of the four teams without Justin. Is, is there anything you've had to do this week to build up their confidence? No, really, I don't. It's an interesting question because I, I called, um, I believe on Monday, I was just putting together myself, watching film and putting together what, uh, you know, what adjustments we would make without Justin, you know, who would be out of bounds situations, press offense situations. And, um, and I was thinking to myself, do I need to talk to them about this? So I just called Colin Gillespie and I just said, Kyle, do I need do I need to talk to these guys about being ready? Us, us really believing we can do this without Justin. He's like, no way. Everybody's everybody's good. Don't worry about it. So I really never never had to approach it because we, we talk about that all year when when other, when anybody's out. You know, Colin was basically out. We played at St. John's. He he didn't practice. So I, I think they they believe in each other. Midway uh, down the aisle, coach on the right side. <clears throat> yes, sir. You. <laughs> With Brandon the microphone, Quinn, sir. Brendan yes. Quinn from the Athletic. No one's called me sir. I'm sorry. Um, uh, Brendan Quinn from the Athletic. Jay, when you got the job 2001, how difficult was it having, because of 85, how difficult was it having national championship expectations <coughs> at a program that, frankly, was very far from being a national championship <laughs> contender? Interesting. I, I've always felt what's unique about Villanova <clears throat> Excuse me. I've always felt what's been unique about Villanova is um, you, you have the passionate fans of a a national championship program, but you have um, I, I look at it like being in a pro town and being in the Northeast. They're reasonable people. They have other they have other interests, you know, and and. And so they won a national championship. And I always think, there's, you guys have heard me say, I think this is the best coaching job in the country. And that's another one of the reasons. Like, they, they want to win national champions, and I knew it. And the, and the, but they look at your team and they say, okay, you're new, you're building a new team. Um, we're going we're to give you time. You know, we're going to support you. And they still sell out every home game. And we weren't great in the beginning. Um, I look at Dana sitting in front of you. We, we had the famous breakfast where she said, yeah, you know I got to write you're going to get fired, you know, if you don't win this year. But it's, it's really unique about Villanova. I, it, I never felt that pressure. I never really felt that pressure and still don't. Up front to the right. Mike Sielski from the Philadelphia Inquirer. Um, I, I know you're not thinking about this now because you still have a game, but at, at what point um, – when you've had these seniors who have been with you for a long time, whether it's guys like Colin or Jermaine or Arch or whoever it might be, at what point have you found that it sinks in that they're not going to be there anymore, these guys who have been part of you for as long as they have? Mike, definitely you do not think about it at all 
because it's almost like you don't want to. But when that last game hits, it, it, it hits you like a ton of the bricks. And um, that's, that's what makes you emotional. When you lose the last game, that's what makes you emotional. It's not losing the game. Because usually, whenever you lose, especially if you get this far, everybody's given all they've got. It, you're not disappointed, but it hits you like this is it for, for my coaching relationship with Colin Gillespie on the floor, with Jermaine Samuels on the floor, with Demir Cosby around through. This is it. That's what makes you really emotional. And uh, I do not look forward to that, but I, I know it, it's, it's going to come. The great thing is when you, if you win, you don't really deal with that. It, it hits you like gradually some, some weeks later, but most in your career, most times you end with a loss. Coach, we're going to stay in the same area and go to Zagoria. Adam. Coach, Adam Zagoria, how are you today? Um, Good, buddy. In, ter in terms of integrating Brian Antoine into the offense, have you learned anything new here in the last couple days since you spoke to us Monday about his role? And, and I guess what are some kind of realistic expectations about what Brian could give you here in these, in these games? I'm, I haven't learned anything new. I mean, Brian is, you know, he's, we've said this so many times, but he just had the most unique path ever of any player we've ever had with, with injuries and, and, and everything. Um, and what he brings us is great speed defensively, which against Kansas is important. He gives us perimeter shooting, and a high-level basketball IQ offensively. That, that's, what he, that's what he brings us. And as he gets to practice and play, it's going to, keep, it's going to start showing this is a great opportunity for him. It's really, you know, I keep saying about this Kansas team speed, and we've done this through the tournament. One of the things that we've learned over the years is when you're playing teams out of your conference like this, um, you got to get on the floor with them. I think I mentioned about the Houston game. Like, you got to get on the floor with them, and pr probably other coaches do this better than us. They can figure it out before the game, but there's certain things for us. We got to get on the floor, see what's working. You know, do do we need Arch's ball handling more? Do we need Brian's speed defense more? What, where does it fit? Do guys get in foul trouble? So, but he, he's ready. As we're taking this next question, we're going to welcome in Jermaine Samuels, Colin Gillespie, and Caleb Daniels as well. We're going to go to the middle of the room. Elaine, right? Yes, uh, Lane Higgins, The Wall Street Journal. Hey, so man. I've got kind of an off-the-wall question for you, but obviously the dress code has been casual these last two years, and you have a bit of a reputation before that. And, you know, it's the first Final Four you've been to, and you maybe don't have to wear a suit, but how, did you pack one in case? And, you know, are you thinking about wearing one? <laughs> I, I, actually had to, I actually had to call our uh, sports information director, as I was packing to ask, uh, do I need a suit? Like, are there any events I, I need to go to? And he said, I don't think so. I, I, and so, no, I don't think I'm gonna wear a suit because I don't have one. Um, but I, it, was, it was nice, it's easy, it's easy packing. The, the hardest thing for me is we, we all dress the same, so we have the same shirt, the same, and they send me pictures of what to wear, and I can't tell the colors. I, I'm always nervous I match up the right gear. That's been difficult. Like when you wear a suit, I, I just pick whatever I want to pick. So that's been challenging for me this year. The, the, the head coach is not as good at look, using the phone and see what I'm supposed to wear. The, the choosing of it for me, because the three piece, putting on the suit, I can pick it right there, and I know what I'm supposed to wear. No one cares what I wear. But if I don't match my guys, because we have so much stuff, we, we don't, and it looks like he screwed it up. So I, I'm more nervous about that than I ever was about what suit I wore. We'll take questions for Coach Wright or Jermaine, Colin, or Caleb at this time. We're going to stay in that same center area of the room. Your name and media outlet, please. Uh, Megan Morehart with the Villanovan. Um, Coach, you guys preach culture all the time, and it seems like attitude is the center of that. What does that word mean to you? It's, uh, it's something that we want our guys to learn about um, for life, and, and, and we want to learn about it on the basketball court. The, the basic concept is um, 
in life, we don't, we don't have control of what happens to us, but we have control of how we respond to whatever happens to us. And, and we have a choice each day, when, whatever's going on, what is our attitude gonna be? So on the basketball court, we, we try to do the same thing. Like sometimes we're trying to do the right thing and we turn the ball over, or we're trying to do the right thing and we do the right thing and, and the referee makes a bad call. We don't, have, we don't control that, but we do, do control what's our attitude on the next play, what's our mindset on the next play. So when these guys are young, they're, they're really interested in basketball. So we, we talk to them, and we practice that on the basketball court, we practice it. And then we start talking about, this is important in life too, we really want you to take this in life more than we do on the basketball court. And, and they've been, they're great about that, and, and, and we hope it helps them in life. Questions for Coach Wright or the Villanova players on the left side of the room. Colin Beasley, the Villanovan. Um, Jay, going into this final weekend with Colin, Jermaine, and Daw, have you, um, have you given them any advice to soak it in, or how are you approaching that? Um, we, we approach that like we are blessed to be able to continue to play, and this is our next game. And our... Our next game and us being together and being able to play basketball is more important than any outside event, Final Four, semifinal. It's all big time stuff, but that, that's how important our next game is to us. And to keep that focus and that concentration, that's been our advice. But I don't really have to say it because these guys, especially these guys have been here, they lived it, they know what it is. And that's, that's how we approach it. Questions for Coach Wright or the Villanova student athletes, Mike. I want to make sure I say, we're not minimizing the Final Four. It's just that that's how important playing a game is to us in our next game. The Final Four is really important. But playing against Kansas and having a game against Kansas is more important to us. Next question is for Mike Jensen. Mike Jensen, Philadelphia Inquirer. Jay, you, you've taken a lot of NIL questions. I'll ask one this way. Uh, is it, I mean, you're one of the better paid coaches in the sport. You've got endorsement deals. Is it easier to morally justify all that to yourself when you know that these guys can, can get some things? Definitely. It, it, it's, that is a, I think there's a lot of great things about um, NIL. And I, th I think it's going to be, I really believe it's going to be good for college basketball moving forward. I think it's going to be good for NBA basketball. I think um, guys, there are guys that I really believe that would like to stay in college, but it's just not a good business decision. It's not intelligent to do it if, if they can only make money in pro basketball. But there are guys that want to stay in college that can make money and they don't have to go to the NBA at a young age when they're not ready. And I think the NBA is going to benefit eventually and they're going to figure out there's some guys that are staying in college, they're making good money, and then we're going to get them when they're ready instead of taking a guy that just has to go. So I think it's going to be good. And, and to answer your question, it's definitely, it's, it's definitely something that has weighed on me. I know a lot of coaches that we make money and these kids are struggling and they're, they're a big part of it. And they have the opportunities. It's not even like they ask for it. It's just they have opportunities and, and they can't take them. And, and, and to be able to see them um, – pick and choose from those opportunities and know that they have that available to them and, they, and they're making money and they're not struggling and they're sharing in, in all of this is, is, is really heartwarming for, for me as a coach and I know a lot of coaches. Continuing with questions for Coach Wright or the student athletes, we're gonna go all the way up front and all the way to the right, gentlemen from the Lawrence Journal World. Yeah, Zach Boyer from the Lawrence Journal World. Uh, Jay, uh, you, you don't, you know, you've one transfer in Caleb. You don't have very many one and dones in the past 20 years since you've been here. What is something that you've realized to be the value of having an experienced team over the years? It's, um, it, it's just, it's just finding the right people and knowing that you have people that want to be a part of your community, want to be a part of their team, and that, and that want to be the best student, the best man, and the best person they can be, the best student, the best player, and the best person they can be. That's why they're there. And they really believe that if I'm a part of this, 
and my goal is to be the best player, student, and person I can be, that gives me my best chance to be an NBA player. You know, there's, it's never a guarantee you're going to be an NBA player, you know, unless you're Zion Williams or something like that. But 99% of the guys, you have to have a path. So they, they choose that their path is being a part of a community, being a part of something bigger than themselves, and they believe in it. And they believe that that's really going to help them be the best player they can be. So if you, you know, to get someone that's going to be there for six, seven months, it, it, sometimes they believe it, and, and we've had a couple of those guys, and they did a great job. And you can see that they return to, be, to remain a part of the community, you know. And then, some, you know, Caleb, we didn't recruit Caleb out of high school, so he didn't have the chance. But he played for Mike Dunleavy, who told me, like, this kid, I, kn I know your culture. I know what this kid, he came to Tulane for the same reasons. He, he would come to Villanova for the same reason. And he's, he's fit in, you know, like a kid that started there from day one because he, he believes in that. On the right side, Dana. <clears throat> Looks like the front right microphone. Uh, Dana O'Neill at The Athletic. Jay, going way backwards, you were talking about like the emotions of saying goodbye eventually to these guys. I'm just trying to ask if you could put yourself maybe in Mike Krzyzewski's shoes knowing that your career <laughs> is coming down to the end. I mean, I, I, I know you're nowhere near that, but I'm just wondering if you can try to imagine what that would feel like. I think, um, you know, uh, it's got to be mind-blowing. It's got to be mind-blowing. I, I, I would be lying if I tell you I don't, you know, you think about it after each year. You think about, you know, where your life is, what are you going to do, and it's really difficult to think about. I honestly, um, and, and if you're him <laughs> and, and you've done it for that long and you've been that successful and it's so much a part of your life and you think about the longer you do it, the more relationships you have and those relationships um, are really meaningful to you. So you're not their coach anymore. That's, that's probably something that's, that's got to be really difficult to deal with. And, you know, I, and again, I think about it because there's got to be there's going to have to be a time when it's time for the next coach at Villanova. There's going to have to be that time. You got to pick the right time. I think Mike did it extremely intelligently, and um, it's got to be really difficult. Final question is going to come from the center of the room. Hey, how you doing, uh, Darian Carter, United States Basketball Writers Association? My question is for Caleb. Uh, what song or movie would you use to describe you guys' final four run and why? <laughs> uh, um, I would have to say uh, possibly Glory Road. Um, <laughs> I, I ain't gonna lie, that's my favorite movie, so uh, <laughs> I had to pick that. But um, and I feel like in the beginning of the movie, they were very like separated as a team. We were never separated by any means, but um, we weren't as close as we are now. And uh, throughout the movie, they became closer and closer, each one of the players with the coaches as well. And uh, I just feel like now it's like we're all close. Like we're brothers, literally. We're not like, we are brothers. So I feel like that would be a movie that's um, similar to us, Villanova basketball. Jermaine, do you think Glory Road? I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I haven't seen Glory Road <laughs> in a while. Uh, I can remember bits and pieces, so you might need to ask Colin that question. Colin? I've never seen Glory Road. Did you have another movie in mind or another song? Hoosiers, maybe? Hoosiers. Yeah, maybe Hoosiers? Yeah, I can't think of a song. The songs are too quick nowadays, so. Uh, I've never seen Hoosiers. I can't think of a song right out there. I never. I don't think I've seen Hoosiers either, Come on, but I know guys. about it. I know about it. I don't really watch movies, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> we want to thank Jermaine, Colin, Caleb, and Coach Wright for joining us here in the main interview room. Thank you, guys. These guys are going to head out to the court for their open practice in just a few minutes. Thank you. Good luck tomorrow, guys. Our next activity here in the main interview room is Coach Self of Kansas at 1130. Student athletes join him at 1140. Breakout sessions for Kansas begin down the hall at 11. That's about eight minutes from now.
Yeah, I don't know if um, I don't know if it matters to you, but they're changing. We we don't even have the other names for the other three on these Malcolm Moran press conferences. I figured we would just play it on the play. I think it's going to be just one player. Oh, good. I keep trying to get these guys to sing. Nobody wants to sing. What's that? OK. How you doing, Pete?
From the main interview room, we're going to have head coach of the Kansas Jayhawks, Bill Self, join us in just a moment. After a couple moments with Coach Self, solo here in the main interview room, we're going to have Ochai Abaji, Jalen Wilson, and Christian Brown join us as well. Uh, and Dewan Harris as well. Let's see, I got somebody that we don't have. Jalen Wilson. What's that? Oh, Bron is gone. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to leave him. So I'm going to have Just a reminder, while joining us here in the main interview room, please silence your cell phone. I'm going to check mine right now. Please refrain from taking any flash photography, no video recording, and no going live. Coach Self is joining us right here in the main interview room right now. You want questions or you want to start us off with something? I don't need to start us off. You, want to do more? You, can just, you can just go ahead and open it up. <laughs> Any questions for Coach Self? If you have a question, please raise your hand. We have microphone stewards that will bring the microphone to you. Please identify yourself by name and media outlet, and then we'll take your question. Let's start off on the back right on the aisle. Seat didn't come down. Hey, Bill, how you doing? Harold Kitts, Fox 4. I want to ask you a question about uh, Christian Brown and Dewan Harris's relationship. It goes back a little while. You know, what have you kind of learned from those two that they've been become good friends over the years? I'm sure you've seen the picture circulating around, circulating around too. Like, what do you learn from those two that made them know that they were great friends? I, I think that they have been boys since sixth grade, if I'm not mistaken. And of course, Dewan's from Columbia, and, and Christian there. Well, he was in Burlington, but but now in the Overland Park area, uh, and and they played on the same AAU team, and so. I know that they spent a ton of time together in the summertime when, when, when the, the kids from out of, out, of, out of the area would come and, and stay in the uh, Kansas City area to practice. So uh, they're great friends. They're like brothers. They bring the best out in each other. They, uh, they uh, rag on each other. They, they uh, 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 I would say, are, are critics of each other, but you can tell that they truly love each other. I mean, it, it is a unique relationship, and I really feel like the Brown family uh, uh, has done a lot for a lot of kids outside their family, but but has probably done as much for Dewan as anybody and, and played a crucial role in, in, in uh, helping him with his life. All right, thank you very much. Now we're going to go up to the front on the right side, Adam. Hey, Bill, Adam Zagoria, New York Times. I just had kind of a fun question for you about suits versus casual wear. Jay was just in here, <clears throat> said he didn't pack a single suit for this trip and plans to wear three-quarter zips and sweats. Um, do you think coaches are ever going to go back to wearing suits uh, or are they just going to keep wearing casual wear and is it, <clears throat> is it good for the game? Are you fine with it? Well, coaching against Jay, I'm very happy there's no wardrobe suits because nobody could compete with him in that, in that regard. Uh, uh, but uh, I kind of like the way we're doing it. Uh, I do. I, I, I hope it stays casual moving forward. Uh, I know our, I think leagues will probably have a lot to do with what the coaches do because uh, in our league we voted to unanimously do this and so we're kind of bound by that. I guess it could be year to year, but I, I, I like the direction it's moving and, and uh, it's certainly a little bit more comfortable and you save money on dry cleaning. So There's that too. On the left side in the third row. Hi, uh, Samir Mala from the basketball, U.S. Basketball Writers Association. Uh, Bill, do you have any uh, superstitions uh, pregame or uh, during the game uh, superstitions? Uh, I'm not superstitious at all. I just think there's certain routines that work a lot better than others. Uh, 
I, I, uh, I, I seriously, on game days, I wear similar clothes. I, uh, uh, I eat the same food every meal. Uh, uh, my routine is almost exactly the same. And, and if I find something that works, I'll definitely stick with it. But, but uh, I would consider myself semi-superstitious, but probably not like a, a baseball manager that would never walk on the chalk line or anything like that. All the way in the back on the right side. Hey, Coach Self, Nathan Sanji, LSU Student News Service. Um, I'm wondering, what is something that you and your staff have done to really block out the noise this weekend, just focus on Villanova? Uh, I, I don't know that we've really done a lot, except limit their probably access to anything other than us, so to speak. Uh, you know, we, we got here Wednesday night, and we were all together the entire night Wednesday night. Last night, we were all together. Uh, players uh, apart from coaches, but, but we've done everything together. And, and uh, the only free time with, with the schedule that we've been on have been kind of late afternoons. And guys usually like to nap around that time. So uh, uh, it hasn't been that difficult. Uh, I guess if you, you know, watched ESPN or sports uh, uh, all the time, or if you lived on your phone all the time, you can certainly be distracted by that. But, you know, I, I want our guys to enjoy it. I don't plan on taking their phones from them. Uh, I've done that in 2008. We took their phones from them uh, because I, I, I didn't want to take any chances. But I, I really want the guys to enjoy it. And, and uh, uh, I think that we're acting mature enough that we can. So I, I, I actually trust them. On the right side, Dan. Yeah, Dan Walken, USA Today. Uh, Bill. There was a lot of discussion here yesterday with uh, Dr. Emmert about the length of time it's taking for enforcement cases to be finished. This will be three full seasons for you played since your notice of allegations. What do you make of that timeline that you guys have operated under and where it's going from here? Well, uh, you know, I can't comment uh, on anything that's ongoing with the case about anything, but but I don't. I, I do hope that the the end is soon. Uh, uh, I believe we're, we're getting closer. And uh, I know that no one uh, uh, probably from any party is, has, uh, uh, has wanted this to uh, go as long as it has. But, but uh, I do believe that the end is soon. We're going to go up front with the Tulane hullabaloo. Yes. Uh, Coach Self, are you using your 2012 runners-up experience here to inspire your team to finish the job this year in New Orleans? Uh, you know, we've, we've talked about it that we were here, uh, but, you know, I'm not a big believer on the past having a ton to do with what happens next. Uh, you know, in 18, we got, we got our – we got it handed to us pretty good, obviously, uh, by the same team. We're same program, not the same team, and and uh, you know that's been mentioned, but we haven't dwelled on that. So all we're trying to do is is live in the present and and uh, you know learn from the past, but certainly live in the present. Coach, we're going to try to be tech forward and go to Zoom, where we have David Melandra Jr. Philly Sports Blitz. Go ahead, David. Hey, Coach. Quick question for you: um, Were there any teams in the Big Twelve this this season resemble any mm -hmm. of the style that Villanova plays? No, not really. Uh, you know, there, you know, our, our team was very defensive oriented and we had some of the best defensive teams in the country in our league. Uh, uh, but even from that standpoint, there was, there was some, you know, there was common thread about, you know, uh, uh, you know, not breaking down, be sound, those sorts of things, but, but how the, the ball was forced and, 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 uh, the switching and things like that was, is, was certainly, uh, a little bit different. So I, I, I don't believe that we've gone against anybody uh, during our regular season that would actually prepare us for the style that Villanova plays. I mean, we, we've, got, we've got guys in our league that, that may post guards, but we don't have guys in our league that have guards get the ball at 20 feet and dribble into a post up. Uh, uh, it's totally different and, and uh, certainly not easy to prepare for. Thank Is there you anything could. you can remember from the last time you played Villanova in the Final Four? Uh, I've, I get ticks whenever I think about it. So uh, uh, there's, I, I remember, I remember, uh, we got a, we started the game off on a two to zero run. 
that was about the highlight of, of that particular game. Uh, uh, I actually watched it this week, and 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 they were fabulous. They they were that that to me, you know, we had a chance to play Kentucky in twelve in the finals, and to me, that was the best team of that you know five or six year period uh, that we had, that I had seen in college basketball, and I really felt like the team that Villanova had in 18 was the best college basketball team in, in, in the last decade. I, I, I really believe that. Coach, coming back to the room, we're going to go to the left side. We have two questions over there. Hey, Coach. Len Jennings with KNBC. Just playing in the bubble last year and then having this experience, going out and practicing in front of the fans, what does it mean for you to have March Madness backs for you, uh, for you and your players? I, I think, you know, uh, you know, two years ago, the tournament was taken from all of us, as many things across the world were. Uh, 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 that was that was probably a year where our team was probably equipped to 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 do quite well. Uh, we had we had a nice squad and was probably going to be the we would have been a one seed and probably the number one overall seed, which doesn't guarantee success. But certainly we've been in the game and you know that that obviously was taken from everybody. And then last year it wasn't the same. I mean. Uh, uh, the way that the year end, ended for us, when we were playing our best ball of the year, and we had two starters get COVID uh, going into the tournament, and that kind of, you know, annihilated us. But but uh, so this is the first time since 2019 that we've actually had a tournament that we've actually feel like we participated in and had a chance. And even though that year we didn't perform well, uh, so I'm excited. I, I I think our players are. Are excited. Several of them were on the 20 team that may, that may have had a real chance, and so uh, uh, we're, we're jacked to, to be here, and and we're soaking it all in. Coach, staying on that left side about midway back. Mick Schaefer, KSHB 41. Um, Coach, every press conference we ask about Remy, and he's had a great tournament, but Dewan's still the starting point guard. How has he handled all of this and all the all the Remy talk in the last minutes? Well, he he doesn't care. I mean, Juan is uh, having the, the the time of his life, and. If anybody had ever really studied Juan's uh, uh, road to get to Kansas, would understand why he would be happy with whatever's thrown his way. He's a, he's a remarkable young man, and and for anybody to go through that much hardship and and family tragedy is 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 what he has uh, 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 is, is 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 truly incredible that a guy of his age could handle it as well as he has, and so. Uh, Juan could care less, and I'll be candid with you. Remy may care, but he didn't care much either. So it, it, it's, it's, they've got a pretty good partnership going. Let's go up front to the right, Zach, from the Lawrence Journal World. Let's go all the way up front. All the way up front. There we go. Yeah, Zach Boyer from the Lawrence Journal World. Bill, at what point in this weekend does it start to hit you that you're going to play these last games with guys like Oach and David? And just, when, does the, when does that emotion start to set in? Uh, it it uh, it hasn't set in probably yet. I told him this morning when we finished practice. I said, uh, I know you guys can't wait to get rid of me, but why don't we do this one more time? You know that 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 would be my goal is to have one more practice. So, uh, uh, you know, when 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 things don't end great, and it and that happens for probably, you know, 50% of America, sometimes uh, uh, the end outweighs the journey. Uh, in this particular situation, the, 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 the end will equal or surpass the journey. And so I, I think there's a un, un, unique uh, closeness that we all feel towards each other uh, uh, that is, and, and for a lot of different reasons of things that's transpired this year, but uh, I'm going to miss those guys, but I hadn't even thought about playing without them yet. Uh, that's something that, that, I, that uh, we'll postpone to whenever the end is here, and, and hopefully it won't be for... 72 or so more hours. Second row, right side. Did you have your hand up? Okay, let's go to Matt in the third row then. Thank you. Uh, Matt Tate, Lawrence Journal World. Coach, you just mentioned you watched 2018 this week. Um, you've largely tried to avoid that. Why'd you watch it this week? Well, I, I didn't really watch it to, uh, uh, to try to, you know, have memories. I watched it to see, you know, when they backed their guards down, did they have the same action off the ball and stuff like that. So, uh, uh, and when I said I watched it, I got through about 12 minutes of it. 
and, and uh, uh, after that, it was a, it, it was very obvious that I wasn't going to learn very much from it. Yeah, there's other tapes to watch. So, uh, uh, but that that was probably good for me to see, just from uh, the standpoint of of how dangerous they can be when they've got it cooking, uh, uh, which they're capable of, because they got, you know, they got guys that can stretch it from all spots. We'll be joined in just a moment by Ochai Abaji, Jalen Wilson, Christian Brown, and Dewan Harris. If you have a question for Coach Self, please raise your hand. Let's go all the way up front. There's the microphone. CJ Moore, The Athletic. Bill, you've had this group for a couple of years now, and it seems like when you try to teach them a lesson like it, they've had experience with it, right, that mm -hmm. those words mean something. What do you think it does to have a team that's been together this long, that core? Um, how does that help when you get to this, this stage? Well, I, you know, I said this all along. I mean, experience is important. Uh, uh, I, don't, I don't believe that ex experience trumps talent. Uh, uh, but, you know, having both, I think, is uh, the, the, the remedy for success more than anything else. And I, th I think we have that. And, you know, we, when we won at No. 8, that was also a team that lost in the first round. And, and that was also a team that couldn't get through the Elite Eight. And, and then things fell right. And so these guys have been through their, their heartache and, and, and been through some tough times, which I think has prepared them for these times. So uh, I, I do think experience does, does matter. We have time for a few more questions for Oach, Jalen, Christian, or Dewan, or Coach Self. Let's take one on the right side on the aisle. Hello, um, Maya Taylor, United States Basketball Writers Association. I was just wondering for the players, you're here at the Final Four, um, so in what ways has basketball impacted your life the most? Let's start with Ochai, then Jalen, then Chris, then Dewan. Um, basketball, I mean, uh, especially here at Kansas in my time here, um, I've met a, uh, met a lot of, a lot of people, um, new faces, um, and a lot of new, you know, networking and, and just a lot of new connections. So Jalen. Yeah, I'd say basketball has definitely just brought me to my closest friends, you know, people who I call brothers now, uh, memories that I'll never forget, especially in college. I mean, uh, just definitely just brought me to a whole other world. I mean, basketball is basically my entire life, so I don't know what I would do without it. Christian. Yeah, I'd say that the relationships I've built, uh, you know, through basketball uh, and just traveling and, you know, like with, with, with like Jalen said, my brothers uh, has been fun, you know, throughout these years, and I got a lot of, a lot of little bros now, so. Duan. Yeah, basketball is like my everything. If I ain't had like basketball in my life, I probably wouldn't be sitting here today, so. If I, if I ain't had basketball, then I'd probably be doing something I ain't supposed to be doing. So I'm, I'm just grateful that I got to get to play the sport that I'm, that I'm playing now. On the right side up front, question from Dennis. Dennis Dodd, CBS Sports. Oche, how do you explain your journey from a guy who didn't have many offers, second semester of high school and as a senior, to the point that yesterday your coach went out of his way to point out you could be the most decorated player at Kansas since Danny Manning? Uh, no, I mean, it's a, it's an honor, um, you know, being, being, even being in the same sentence as, uh, Danny Manning and all those other great players. Um, it just shows a lot about, you know, running your own race. Um, a lot of people from high school, you know, they either come out, you know, hot or they come out, you know, underrated. Um, I think just everyone has their own path and, um, you know, that's, that's just how it is. Let's go to the front and center of the room. Take a journey with me to Alabama. A.P. Stedham, W.H.E.P., A.M. and F.M., Foley, Alabama. Uh, this is for the coach and all the players. What do you try to do with shooting the ball in this big venue? You know, how do you calibrate yourself to this spacious uh, arena and stadium? What do you tell the players, and what have you learned about shooting in this type of venue? Coach first. Well, I haven't, I haven't mentioned it to the players. I mean, uh, uh, I think that we can make a bigger deal out of things and what actually exists. And, Bottom lines is the realm seems soft to me and depth perception seems good and there's absolutely no reasons why we shouldn't shoot the ball well here. And, and, and that's, that's how I'm looking at this. Jalen and Christian, you guys want to take this? Jalen first. Uh, I mean, we, we got to put up shots yesterday. Uh, about to put up some more now. 
and you know maybe after the first couple of shots it may be feel different but after that it's just normal shooting yeah, i say the same thing coach just tells us to jump up and shoot it and stop aiming it so i'm gonna try that hope it works <laughs> Through at the back of the room on the right side. A few more minutes left for questions. Uh, Darian Carter, U.S. Basketball's Right Association. My question is for Ochi. Ochi, excuse me. <laughs> uh, after winning the Midwest, you got you and Remy uh, recreated the Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski Bad Boys for Life video by Diddy. Um, what message were you guys trying to send making that video? Uh, no, we weren't trying to send a message or anything. Um, it was just kind of just um, a fun media post uh, for our fans, basically. On the left side, about midway back. No uh, Len Jennings, KNBC, uh, Ochai. Uh, any thoughts that this is kind of coming, your career at Kansas is coming to an end? Have you had a chance to think about it? Uh, yeah, yeah. I've had a, a lot of time to think about it. Um, just my time here and, you know, like I said, all the people that I met, um, you know, all the, all the experiences that, I, that I've had. Uh, but, no, it's just uh, it's, it's great to be in this moment um, and to be ending my, my career like this. On the right side, midway back. Hi, uh, for the players, Christina Huang, USBWA. Um, so how has playing in such a tough defensive uh, conference really prepared you guys for the postseason? Duan, what do you think about that? Uh, really, give our credit to our coach. You know, he's on us about every single thing about anything. So if you mess up, he's going to get on you. If you mess up about the little things, he'll even get on you. So all the credit goes to coach and all the coaching staff. And let's wrap up all the way on the left on the aisle. Mick Schaefer, KSHB 41. Question for Dewan. What's your relationship like with, with Remy um, on and off the court? Uh, uh, it's great. Last night, Remy was in our room talking, me and CB's room talking. He'd be coming in there sometimes on the away game. So it's great. You know, it's fun playing with him. He gives us a lot of energy, and then he lets me get a lot of pressure off the ball, and let him, I let him play, make plays a lot. So it's just, it's just fun being around him. He's a good, he's a good player. We'd like to thank Coach Self, Ochai, Jalen, Christian, and Dewan for joining us here in the main interview room. They're going to hit the thank court for open Thanks. practice. That's why. I, that's why I sit on this side. That's why I sit on this side. I stay all the way on this side. That's why. Our next activity here in the main interview room, uh, Coach Wright returns with one player from Villanova for our full court press conference. That's going to be for the college students that attended the writing seminar this morning. Is that you guys? Okay. So we'll start that in about 10 minutes. We'll take uh, as many questions as you guys have. Regularly credentialed members of the media, you guys are allowed to attend these. Obviously, you're allowed to take photos. You're allowed to capture sound clips, uh, capture broadcast clips, anything you guys want to do except questions only for these college students that attended the writing seminar this morning. It's coming up in 10 minutes. I did say that. I think I said that. I did say that. Um, did Coach? No, oh, this is your phone, not Coach Self's phone. OK.
nothing here. How loud do you guys want to be? What about one mic holder? And that mic holder's name is Jesse Kelsey. Just a reminder, you guys attending, uh, no video with your phones, no flash photography. You can take still photos. Uh, if you need video, you have to get it through Hammond Communications. You have to lock in, latch in, and download it. What's that? You want to do it? Check, 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 check. We have a celebrity microphone steward. We'll run this just like one of our regular media press conferences. You'll introduce yourself with your name and your media outlet. Then you'll state your question address Coach Wright, or you can address Jermaine, who's going to come and represent the Villanova student athletes. We'll take as many questions as you guys have up to 15 minutes. If you guys are done in three questions, I'm going to go eat some meatballs and uh, what is, is that a farfalle, Jesse? Is that, is that a shell pasta? Sound. Is that a gemelli? Is it a corkscrew or a twist? You would know better than I. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. Hello. Now avert your eyes, please. Jesse and I have been doing these for, Jesse, I think this is my 10th year doing this job. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, probably because I would have jumped in for moose. Yeah. Coach Wright returns in one minute. Take this moment to silence your cell phone. I'm going to check mine. I always check mine at this, at this time.
All right. Welcome back. Welcome back. I don't, I, don't even, I don't even think they know my first name. <laughs> We'd like to welcome back in Jay Wright, the head coach of the Villanova Wildcats, as well as Jermaine Samuels. Coach and Jermaine, we thank you so much for your generous uh, use of your time here. We have uh, full court press collegiate journalists here that attended Hello. the USBWA writing seminar this morning. Uh, we'll get right into the questions. If you have a question for Coach Wright or Jermaine, please raise your hand. Jesse Kelsey is our Hall of Fame microphone steward. Let's go to the center of the room. <laughs> How's it going, Coach? Nathan Sanji, LSU Manship News Service. Cool. You guys played a really tough non-conference schedule this year. You had Baylor, Purdue, Tennessee. What do you think you and your team learned from those early tough games that got you here? Um, what's your first name again? Nathan. Nathan. Good question. I... <laughs> I question all year at different times on year, was that a mistake? You know, we, we had the least home games of any major college program in the country. And uh, when, when we came to the end of that non-conference schedule, we, we played at Baylor after playing Syracuse at Madison Square Garden. And then when we came home from Baylor, we went to our first road game. Our first Big East game was at Creighton in Omaha. So we were... I felt like we were physically and mentally fatigued, and I thought to myself, you screwed this up. You know? And I told the team that. I said, this, one, this might be on me. But when we, since we've gotten to this point, like just having played that game against Houston, which really was like a road game in San Antonio, I felt like our guys had been through so much on the road that they were really used to it, and I felt like that schedule actually helped us. If you have a question for Coach or Jermaine, raise your hand. Let's go to the center. How are you doing, Coach? Uh, Peter Radicus, the Reveille. Um, just talk about the advantages that having the veteran leaders and just a veteran team that you all have, the advantages that that gives you in a stage like this. Great. And Peter, what school are you? LSU. Uh, both? You're two LSU guys. Good, man. Um, it is, it's, a big, it's a big advantage. It, it, it is, it's a great value, especially the further you advance in the tournament because the further you advance in the tournament, there's a lot of things, and they're all nice things that they that, that can distract you. You know, one of the things we tell our guys is, you know, praise and adulation is like perfume. You know, you can sniff it, but if you if you swallow it, it's poison. And when you have older guys and leaders like Jermaine and Colin and Demir, you really don't you don't have to say it, and they make sure that the guys live it. And when you get in big game situations, same thing. Like, like we were just talking about playing that game against Houston. You know, a younger guy could get intimidated in a big game like that, not expecting to be like a road game, but these guys have seen everything. So it's really valuable. Before we get to our next question, I just want to explain to our, we have two members of the regularly credentialed media joining us with the orange uh, lanyards. This session, you guys are certainly welcome to attend, but this session is questions only for our collegiate students. The full court press program. They attended a writing seminar this morning for the USPWA. So let's move down to the front. Right. Hi, Maya Taylor um, from the University of Texas. My question's for Jermaine. Um, I was wondering, what does being a leader mean to you, both on and off the court? That's a great question, Maya. I, I want to hear this. Uh, what it means to me is uh, making sure everyone is holding themselves accountable. Um, it starts off with me. If I'm not doing it, then there's no reason for anyone else to do it. So I take I take it upon myself to make sure that everyone is living up to the same standard that I am. And um, just trying to be as consistent as possible, bringing it every single day any way I can, making sure that everyone's in a great mental health space, uh, mental space and um, just being outside of myself. Um, I think that's the biggest thing about being a leader. Outstanding. Next question is going to go to the second row, and then we have another one in the third row. Hey, Coach Carter Yates from the University of Texas. Uh, when you made that call after Justin Moore's injury, wondering if the team was ready, why was it Colin that you called? 
Oh, great, great question. And what's your first name again? Carter. Carter. And uh, you're a Texas Longhorn? Nice. Um, you know, I would have called him or, him or Jermaine. Like, they're the two guys, to Maya's question, that are the leaders that have a, a great pulse on our team. And I trust, I trust with Jermaine and Colin that when I ask them a question, you just heard Jermaine say this, they're not answering with their own personal opinion. They, they're giving me... They're giving me the team's honest sentiment. I, I always ask these guys, you know, I know you're smart enough to tell me what the coach wants to hear. I need to hear the truth. We need to have an authentic relationship. And he and Colin are amazing. So probably C came up before J on my phone. I called Colin. But that, that's how I use both of these two to get good, honest feedback on, on where the team's mindset is. Jermaine, no offense, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> they were probably together when I called them, and they didn't fit together so much. <laughs> right in the middle. Uh, Samir Mala from uh, Arizona State University. I was wondering, uh, do you guys have any uh, pregame or uh, before uh, uh, superstitions? Or, like, I know, uh, Jay, you always wear uh, a vest to every game. So do you have any, uh, yeah, superstitions? Do you have any? Um, I usually try to listen to the same songs or if I remember the same songs in a certain order. Um, I put my right socks on, right shoes on before I put anything on my left. Um, uh, before every game, um, I look up into the stands and look at the scoreboard so I know where it's at. I clap to my teammates and then once the ball's tipped, I did all I could in my superstitions. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm the worst at that. Like, if someone does have superstitions, they hate being around me because I purposely don't do any of that. We do have a great um, commitment to consistency in our schedule and everything we do. Not for superstitious reasons, more for rhythm and, um, and mindset reasons. But we, we do everything exactly the same way game day from five hours before the game until the tip. We, Everything is exactly the same every day, every game, home, road. And that's, that's more for consistency and mindset. Second row, uh, Darian Carter, Arizona State University. Uh, a follow-up for Jermaine, you mentioned some of the songs you listen to uh, pregame. Uh, I'm just curious, uh, who are some of your favorite artists and uh, favorite songs uh, you like right now? Uh, it's funny. Um, when I, before I, before I, uh, we get off the bus, I usually listen to like pop punk. Or like, so I listen to like Machine Gun Kelly or anything Travis Barker is in, mix in some Trippy Red. So just whatever I'm feeling at the time. It could be J. Cole, it could be anything. But usually I start off with a little bit of rock music. We have a couple more minutes and the queue is full of questions. Red shirt right here. Red shirt? In the red shirt. Oh. Oh. With the shirt that's red. Oh, thanks. Uh, Ryan Miller, uh, Mississippi State University. Uh, this is for uh, Mr. Samuels. What is your... Uh, balance between athletics and school? Um, my balance is making sure that I always make time for, uh, not athletics, <laughs> um, for school. So anytime that I have an assignment due, I try to get ahead of it. Um, me, Colin, and, and Dada actually have a group chat. So we get it way ahead of our, whether it's uh, emailing teachers, getting assignments, and we try to make sure we get to it at least weeks ahead. So just being almost over-prepared because we know what we have to do. We know we're going to be on the road. And we know how much you know missing class time, uh, you know, can can be uh, play a role. So um, we just try to stay on top of things because we already know we're going to take care of basketball, but we got to make sure that you know the school part fits in as well. Front row. Hey, Christina Huang, Texas. Um, this is for Jermaine. Um, you know, obviously you guys have a game tomorrow, but have you started to kind of reflect on your college career as a whole? Uh, to be completely honest with you, no, um, I haven't. I feel like. The moment I start doing that is the moment I start uh, feeding into the pressure or anything like that. So I just try to stay in the moment, knowing that my teammates need me and they need the best mentally clear version of me. And if I start reflecting on the past, and I think that's going to um, hinder my performance. For the first time this weekend, Hoops is in the house. Is he? Right down front. Hoops is in the house. This is a legend, guys. You guys want this is Hoops Weiss, one of the greatest sports writers of all time. You guys want to meet him Hall of before Famer. you go. Make sure you 
meet all these guys, hoops. After this session, you guys got to go to Philadelphia hoops Daily News, New York Daily News, famous, famous guy. I think we're up front, and then we're going to try to get two quick ones in there, and then we got to let these guys go. Hi, Matthew Bonkowski. I'm also from the University of Texas. Uh, my question is for Jermaine. I wanted to ask you about your relationship with Colin. Um, I know you guys decided to come back um, for another year using your code eligibil eligibility. Um, so just wanted to ask you how special that relationship is, and is this run everything that you had hoped for when you decided to come back? Yeah, uh, my first day on campus, like officially being a Villanova student, was with Colin Gillespie. We, he picked me up in his car and we went to Target to go buy uh, stuff of the room. Um, and ever since then, I can't remember a time without him. Um, even we've been roommates a couple times. We were roommates freshman year. Uh, we were roommates again junior, junior, and then this senior senior year, and then this year. So I've, there hasn't been a time without Colin. And uh, he's like he's a brother to me. He's family. His family's cool with my family. It's, it's all love. So uh, it, it does it does mean a whole lot to me that I get a chance to come in with him and then also leave with him. You guys did rock, paper, scissors for the last question? No, no. She, she, All right, we're she, pleased she, with the outcome. No complaints, no grievances will be filed. OK. But um, uh, this is Henry Huber from LSU. Uh, my question is for Jermaine. Uh, you've had a hugely impactful uh, performance for your team throughout this tournament. Uh, I mean, your averages in terms of scoring and, and rebounding are both up. Uh, how does it feel being able to do that and not only be able to do that, but do that as a, a senior in your, your last year with the team? Uh, it's just, it feels good um, to be able to, to do that. Um, I've been very fortunate. The ball's been, you know, kind of been rolling my way, but um, I like to say that I've been trying to do that all year. It's whatever the team needs. Um, it doesn't matter if I score points or, you know, I get the big play. It's all about doing what the team needs. And, if that means scoring 17, then that means scoring 17. If that means grabbing 10 boards, it means grabbing 10 boards. If that means scoring three points, it means scoring three points. So um, whatever it takes, and you know, at the end of the day, I just want to know that I went out on my own terms as being a Villanova basketball player. And if I can do that, then that'll mean the world to me. Curry Kirkpatrick, another legend, joins us here on the right side. You guys have to talk to them afterwards. Jermaine, I have incredibly sad news i think this is your absolute last media obligation before you get to play tomorrow night uh, so fine. everybody can we thank jermaine and can we thank coach wright for joining appreciate us appreciate you, you guys, guys bro, and, thank you you guys did a tremendous job Good, you guys great great questions make sure you meet Kerry kirkpatrick and dick weiss these are two legendary guys Seriously. all right it's like meeting uh Krzyzewski. <laughs> see you guys i think we gotta get you back here for some hardware a little bit later on to today or I think, uh, I think Colin won the. Did he win it today? I think it's a four or something like that. We don't, we don't, I, but I don't know. We, we don't need Jermaine, no. Maybe, yeah, check with Mike. I'm not sure if you come back for that. Yeah, let's do that. 12 we, minutes. 12 you minutes. <laughs> you got one? Um, you got, gonna, you, don't wait. give me yours. No, I've got two for you. I got yours. Oops, I didn't. My jacket's Did falling apart. I, I don't know if it's a box or if it's a, but get, get your stuff. That could be spaghetti and meatballs. I made it, though. Not to the map. Is it? Good. Quite mess up with the camera. You too.
can't mess up food though in New Orleans. So that's good. That's good to hear. Oh, you had your did your steak in, right? What's that? Hey, you guys did great.
Hey, Aaron. Hey. How's it going? Amen. Ready for a nap? This is hour three straight of five. I got my Good Friday enthusiasm going. Hey, Brian Kennedy, I'm not sure if you can hear me. This is Mark. I'm the news conference moderator here in New Orleans. Um, I, uh, hey, yeah, Brian. I can hear you. How's it going? Uh, Doing we don't, well. No Caleb Love availability in this room today. I think you had a question for him, but we'll, we'll be glad to take a question from you for Coach Davis, Brady, Manick, Armando Baycott. Uh, I think we'll, get, we'll hear from RJ Davis later as well. But okay, I think cool. your question was for Caleb Love. Maybe. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's not available. He's not uh, coming here. Just want to let you know. Okay. Cool. All right. Cool. Thank you for the heads up. Yep. You got it. All right. We will be joined by North Carolina head coach Hubert Davis in just a moment or two. Coach Davis will join us from twelve thirty to twelve forty by himself. We'll take uh, your questions, and he'll give his answers during that time period. Brady Manick and Armando Baycott will leave the breakout sessions in a few minutes, and they'll join us down here with Coach Davis from 1240 to 1250. So Hubert Davis will be here for 20 minutes, 1230 to 1250, joined by student-athletes 10 minutes in. That's going to be Brady Manick and Armando Baycott. Matt, yesterday Zag threw a frisbee up here, and I was mentioning how I was mentioning how I still made the play, even though I'm tucked in with a tie on. Hey, coach. Hey, how are you doing? Good. Great to see you again. Welcome back. We're joined now by North Carolina head coach Hubert Davis. If you have a question for Coach Davis, raise your hand. Let's go right to the middle with Ian. We'll get to all your guys' questions. Coach is with us for 20 minutes. Student athletes coming about 10. Go ahead, Ian. Ian O'Connor with the New York Post. Uh, Hubert, if I could just take you back a few years to your playing days. Game 594, I know you've been asked about a lot over the years. but That's out- longer than a few years. <laughs> that's a, that was a long time ago. <laughs> but the call aside, you had to, at the time, make two of the biggest uh, free throws in the history of that franchise, and you did. Just what were your thoughts as you prepared to do that, particularly during the timeout? And secondly, when you succeed under pressure as a player, can that help you later under pressure as a coach? Well, you know, I just re- I remember that series, um, you know, the, uh, the previous year we had won the first two games and then Chicago won the, the next two and we lost in a dramatic game five. And uh, it was another crazy and epic game five in uh, 94. And I just, um, I just d- didn't want us to be in that situation again. And when I got fouled and went to the free throw line, nothing was on my mind other than making those two free throws and putting us one game closer um, uh, to the Eastern Conference Finals. And so um, those are great times uh, playing for Pat Riley and Jeff Van Gundy and playing with players like Doc Rivers and Patrick Ewing and Rolando Blackman and John Starks. It was a perfect team for me to go to, and I wish that I would have stayed a New York Nick my entire NBA career. But you talked about being in pressure situations and big time atmospheres, uh, you know, playing at North Carolina for four years, playing in the NBA for 12, playing in New York for four years, and those matchups with New York and uh, with the Knicks and Chicago Bulls, it puts things into perspective so that now with me as head coach at North Carolina, I've been there before, 
maybe not as a coach, but in terms of the atmosphere and um, um, I've been there before. So it puts me in a position where I'm calm and I'm confident. And um, I really believe something that helps is my personal career playing on the biggest stage. Just a quick reminder for media in attendance, no recording video on your mobile devices. Let's go to the middle of the room, same area. Will Dawson, Christian Broadcasting Network. Coach, you've been, uh, you haven't been shy about sharing your faith. I was just wondering how your faith informs your, your coaching and how special and blessed you feel to be here. Well, I mean, my, the foundation of who I am is my relationship with Jesus. And so whether it's coaching, whether it's my marriage, whether it's my three kids, decision-making, everything is filtered through my faith. And so um, I can't do anything without it. Um, it's not me sharing it, it's me being me. And so um, that's how I roll every day. And um, that's just who I am. <laughs> all the way up front and all the way left, coach. That's our next question. Josh Grand, WSJS Winston-Salem. First matchup to the second matchup, how much of a relief do you think it was on Leakey when you told him primarily you're just going to be focusing on AJ and related to that, sight lines for shooters like AJ, RJ, Caleb, how important are these next few days to get adjusted to that in a building like this? Well, first of all, I mean, Leakey, um, not only is he a great defender, he's a versatile defender. And so I've said a number of times, I wish that you know, in certain situations, I wish I could have cut him in half or in three parts to be able to guard three different people. And throughout a game, he's he's been able to do that. I don't I don't think there's been any relief. I think he takes the challenge to guard whomever he's assigned to, and uh, he feels very confident from a defensive standpoint that he can defend anybody out there on the floor. Uh, a number of people have talked about depth perception and the sight lines. I'm just. I'm just not there. Just give me a basketball, you know, two baskets and let's shoot. And so I don't buy into, it's a big arena, the depth perception, the sight lines, I don't know what the background is. Just shoot the ball. And if it goes in, it goes in. If you miss, you miss and just, let's just play basketball. <laughs> Coach, we're headed over to the right side. Five rows back, Matt. Matt Norlander, CBS Sports. Hubert, it's April 1st, a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. It's my oldest son's birthday. Uh, there and we it, go. And that's not April Fool's. He, is. he, turned, he turned 20 today. Okay? Excellent. Yeah, he's Happy. flying in today. <laughs> well, that's a wonderful gift. Uh, it was a year ago to the day when Roy's retirement was announced. Uh, I wonder if you could just take us back to what your life was like 365 <laughs> days ago and what has come for you in the past year that, you know, on this day when you're hoping you're going to get the job, just something about the profession and, and, and holding this occupation that not Roy, no one could have prepared you for that you've gone through over the past year? Well, I mean, on this day, the, the day that, you know, uh, Coach Williams uh, retired a year ago today, um, for me, it was a day of sadness. I didn't want him to go. I had been as assistant coach for nine years and I was in a really good place. I, I enjoyed working for him. I enjoyed being one of his assistants and I knew how passionate he was, not only about coaching, but coaching at the University of North Carolina. So when he officially retired, that was, that was a day of sadness for me. And so, um, and then through the process of trying to decide who was gonna be the next head coach, um, you know, it was interesting. That was the first time in my life that I interviewed for a job. You don't interview for a job when you get drafted in the NBA. Uh, ESPN picked me, so I worked there for seven years. Coach Williams, out of the blue, said we'd like to be one of your assistant coaches. I didn't go through an interview process there. And so that was the strangest part was interviewing for a job and at 51 years old for the first time you were doing something that you've never done before. And to think about, you know, I've said this before, things have been great, but things have been so busy. I haven't had time to process and think. And so to say what is going on this year, I don't know. After the season, I'll be able to have time to catch my breath and be able to think about things. but. 
the only time that I can feel like that I can really think about where I am and where we were going was at the at the end of the game against St. Peter's when it looked like we were going to the Final Four. And that's why I was so emotional. It was the first time in a, in a year that I can actually enjoy the moment because in other situations, it was always next game, next recruit, next practice, next media. It was always something to go to. And so it's been a great year. And to think that we would be in the Final Four, it's a pretty cool deal. Well, that's the next media this weekend, Coach. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to the next question. Right side front. Hey, Hubert. Brendan Marks from The Athletic. Yeah. Uh, you've mentioned throughout the year that you wanted guys to have their own testimonies, their own stories. You wanted them to experience Carolina basketball as you did when you were a player. Do, do you get a sense that they are finally maybe appreciating that more? And if so, are there examples of things that they've done or said? It looked like they were in amazement walking onto the court yesterday that have sort of gotten that through to you. No, they are. They are. They're they're. And that's the thing, as I told you before, that brings me so much joy is, you know, I don't have to talk about what it feels like to be at a Final Four or to, or to come up big in a big time situation with the Carolina uniform. They, they have a number of stories this year that they can draw upon, that they can grab onto for enjoyment, for peace, for confidence. And so that's great. One of the biggest things for me yesterday is watching them walk out to the floor. You know, before we went out to practice, I said, this is the first and only time I want you to bring your phones. And so we walked out there and they're like, why are you telling us to bring our phones? I said, just do it. And so as they walked out, just to see the floor, just to see how big this place was, the smiles on their faces, it was like when my little kids came down for Christmas, they were just so filled with joy that they were getting a chance to be a part of this. And... It was great. It was awesome. And so to see those smiles, even Caleb uh, said, every seat is going to be filled in our game? I said, yes. And he says, are there going to be people at the open practice? I said, yes. And he came back again. He goes, all these seats are going to be filled for the game? I said, yes. I said, is that OK? Because I'm looking to play you a lot of minutes. Are you going to be all right here, OK? And he was like, yeah, 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 coach, yeah. And I was like, OK, I just want to make sure, because I need you to make some buckets, OK? And but just that kid-like attitude was just was great. And so for me to be able to experience that, it's interesting. I wanted them to have stories and testimonies and memories. And you know what they're doing? They're giving me more, which is really, really cool. Coach, we're going to attempt a technology flex here and go to Zoom. Brian okay, Kennedy great. is in St. Louis. Actually, I think we got a – yeah, there's Brian. Go ahead, Brian. Hey, Coach. <laughs> you can't see me there, obviously. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Brian Kennedy from News 4 in St. Louis. Uh, you were just talking about Caleb, doing a story on Caleb. I talked to his, his, his high school coach earlier. What does he bring to the table that we don't necessarily see in the stat book? Well, his leadership has just developed throughout the um, entire season, and it, it, it was needed. You know, there was times at the beginning of the year that I said, you know, we just didn't have a voice in the locker room. And in order to be a good basketball team, I just really feel like you have to have that. Over the year, it just hasn't been Caleb. It's been everybody. Everybody within their personality has stepped up and become a leader. And Caleb has become one of those leaders. I mean, just in practice today, he was finishing my sentences. He knew exactly where to go and what to do. And it was almost like I had another assistant coach out there on the floor. And so not only is he having a fantastic year on the court, his leadership has really stepped forward over the last two, two and a half months. And it's been a huge benefit for our team. Coach, we're going to try this again. We're going to go to the charm city of Baltimore. Christopher Heidel is with us as well. Chris. Hi, Coach. Thanks for taking my question. Chris Heidel from Herbert and Radio in Baltimore. Uh, Coach, when did, you know, when did you know you had a special team this year? I know you guys had a tough uh, beginning of the year, and I think you guys got on track in the middle of the year. When did you know you had a special team knowing that you guys could make it? We're good? Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> um, I always felt like we had a special team as soon as we started practice in the summer. I, I really did. Did I – was my hope for them to be at this place at the Final Four, having a chance to win a national championship? Yes. Did I feel like we had enough talent to do that? Yes. But I had always believed that 
we could have a special team. I, the first day of practice, I put a picture of the Superdome in their locker. And I talked about it at midcourt on our first official practice. And I told them, like, there's going to be a lot of hard work. We're going to have to prepare. And we're going to have to play really well. But this is, this is our expectation of this team. And I just really I wanted them to see where they were going. I told them to tell their parents, book their hotels and travel arrangements, that we would be in New Orleans in April. And the reason being is I really felt like this team had a chance to be able to do that. So I felt that way from the beginning. We're joined now by Brady Manick and Armando Baycott. Questions for the student athletes or for Coach Davis. Let's go up front to the center. Hey, Coach, uh, this question is for you. J.B. Riggs for Spectrum News 1. Um, I asked all the players about the vibes going into what is essentially the biggest games, the biggest game of their lives. I, I want to know from you, what are you seeing from them compared to their vibes going into the regular season finale at Duke, which was also the biggest game of their lives? And um, when did you start to see that, that looseness, that that? feeling of not playing with pressure anymore or whatever and just going out there and having fun for you to catapult you guys into the position that you are right now? Well, I, I feel like our guys are in a perfect place um, because, um, you know, one of the things that I think they have done a great job at is, is turning off or turning down the noise. And we've talked about it, that at great length and turning down that noise from the phone family, friends, and the fans and focusing on what allows us to be at our best. And I think when you have you know, great kids and great players like Armando and Brady that understand that what is real for us to have success on Saturday is our preparation, is our practice, and how hard we play. And so that's something that, that we needed in that second matchup against Duke. And we had to block out all the noise. We had to focus on what was real for us to be at our best. And um, my belief is, is that they have found benefit in that and they have found success on that. And because of that, what draws from them is, is a confidence to be in this situation and to be able to play the type of basketball that they've been playing all year, specifically the last two, two and a half months. We're gonna go to the right side of the room, third row, Billy. Uh, Billy Witz with the New York Times. Hubert, the, the game has changed, you know, a lot in the last, uh, you know, decade or two, just with the emphasis on the three-point shot. You were a pretty good three-point shooter. How much would you like to play, you know, whether it's in college or the NBA in, in, in today's game? Um, I like the NBA salaries now, but you know what I would said, you know, born at the wrong time you know my uncle played 16 years in the nba he was a seven-time all-star and i was just a role player for 12 years in the nba and i made more money than him <laughs> and uh but um just playing basketball would be fun but during this time you know shooting from three wasn't really a big emphasis when i was in the nba i would say most teams shot less than 10 three-pointers on average. Everything was throwing the ball into the paint. And when you have a guy like Patrick Ewan, I understand why you would do that. But it would be a lot of fun to have unlimited green light access to be able to shoot the ball anytime that you want it from three-point range. You want to follow? Does it, any of, I guess, your, you know, that skill that, that you had, does that, um, I don't know, are, are there things that you can draw from that to convey to your own guy shooters? Because they look so... You know, especially in this tournament, I mean, just, you know, confidence isn't a problem. And uh, no, I, just... I, well, I think the reason why our guys are such great shooters I, I, is for a number of reasons. I think number one is they put in the time like you don't you're not most people aren't able to see the hard work that these kids put in before and after practice, early in the mornings, late night, like it's because of hard work. Um, the second thing is, is and it's something that I love is their shot selection. I don't care how good a shooter you are. If you don't shoot good shots, it's gonna be very difficult to have great percentages. Our guys are great shooters. They work hard at it and they take good shots. And so when you put those three things together, you're going to be really consistent beyond the arc, and that's something that our guys consistently do. Right side, about midway back. Any questions for Armando or for Brady? 
Uh, Andrew Jones, Tar Heel Illustrated. It's a co question for Coach, but also a, a second part question for the two players. Coach, Arma I talked to Armando about 20 minutes ago, and he said it seems like forever since the St. Peter's game was played. Are you sensing that the guys are pretty anxious to get out there, and are you doing anything different to kind of keep them even keeled? There's an old saying that Mac Brown says, you don't want to emotionally play the game on Wednesday or Thursday when you have to play it on Saturday. And second part to the guys, are you sensing anything different from Coach this week as far as him trying to keep you guys sort of even keeled than what you've experienced before? Um, in terms of the emotion, it, that uh, it never turns off. And so there, that, I want to play today but there's enough emotion to play tomorrow. <laughs> and I, I've told the guys that whether there, there is no difference between game day, Final Four, and a shoot around, or pick up in the summer, as opposed to a midday, midweek practice. Like, every time that you step on the floor, it's an opportunity to get better, and it's an opportunity to compete, and it's live action. And so um, we don't have to turn it up, turn it down, it's on and the light stays on all the time. And so, we, we, you know, today's practice is live action and tomorrow we'll be ready to go. Brady and Armando, Brady first, your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think he's done a really good job of, of keeping us interested and, uh, you know, he, he brings that energy. And I, I talked about it yesterday of how he's got these little sayings. He's always, he's always saying he said about four of them right here in that statement about live action and I'll play today. He, uh, you know, beginning of the year, we were all kind of like, oh, why, is he, why does he keep saying this? But, you know, later in the year, we've gotten to the point where it's, it's been like he, he's been right, and this is, uh, this, is, this is why he's been saying it. Yeah, I agree with what Brady said. I mean, once we, as a team, our energy started to match his, especially on just a day-to-day -day basis, that's when I know the huge changes have been making. So he really has never changed his approach to any game, and I feel like we've changed our approach going into every game, and that's what's really helped us. All the way back to the left, Mike. Uh, the, the, Mike DeCourcy from Sporting News this is for Hubert and Brady. Um, when you've been talking a lot about the vastness of this arena relative to your players experiencing it, um, since we've been playing this thing in domes, I guess it's been 40 years since it was here, um, there's been a lot of talk about is it conducive to shooting? You had a great day when you played in 91, 25 points. So I wanted to ask you about what you've conveyed to them about uh, shooting in such a, a, an arena. And Brady, obviously, you've had such a great tear of making shots. And so, so what you felt like uh, since you started shooting around in here? I know you had I haven't talked to them one second about the sight lines or the depth perception or shooting the ball in a dome. When I was a player, I didn't think about it either. I just wanted to shoot. And it's just, it, there's just, it's just a non-factor to me. Um, I'm not saying that it's not a non-factor for others, but for me it was never, and for our players, it's not a factor. Um, Brady's gonna shoot, or Monday's gonna shoot, it's the same way at the Smith Center. If they shoot it the right way, it's gonna go in. And if we miss it, we're going to get the offensive rebound. And if we miss the offensive rebound, we're going to get fouled and we're going to go to the free throw line. And statistically, we're the best free throw shooting team in the ACC. So we got three cracks at it. So I feel very confident about our shooting in the Superdome. Brady. Yeah, well, kind, of what, kind of what he said. Um, you know, you, ne you never sh shot outside in the driveway with the wind blowing and you miss it and it rolls down the street. Then you haven't really shot a basketball, so I don't think it'll be too big of a problem for us. And I, I, I'm just excited to get going. We want to thank Brady, Armando, and Coach Davis for joining us here in the main interview room. You guys are going to head out to the court and enjoy that open practice. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Our next activity in here at 1 p.m., uh, Coach Self will be back for the full, port, full court uh, collegiate U.S. BWA experience. Uh, we'll have the Duke breakout sessions that begin at 1 p.m. as well. That's less than 10 minutes from now. Duke players available in those breakout rooms. Hello, Aaron. Good afternoon to you. Chris, I got on the
All right, guys, let's all take a minute, make sure our cell phones are on silent again. Make sure our flashes are off. Make sure we're ready to take a selfie with Amy Acola from the Atlantic Coast Conference, or maybe get her autograph. She's uh, six to eight rows behind you. <laughs> now they can't take it away. A decade of news conference mediocrity right here. Hi, Eddie. Uh, these guys are from the USBWA. Well, they're, uh, they're college journalists majoring in something journalistic or journalism adjacent. And uh, they get a, a special Q&A with Coach Self and with a mystery Kansas player. Oh, it's not a mystery. <laughs> oh, Chai, we'll be back. That's news to me. Hey, Hoops. It's good to see you, too. How you doing? Everything's good. Yes, sir. After, uh, what do you call it, Tuesday, summer vacation starts, so I get to spend some time at home, make my wife and children happy, the whole thing. Yeah. Summertime in Annapolis. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. You doing good? You're back? Welcome back. It's a really great thing you guys are doing here. Hey, Coach. Welcome back again. We're joined now by head coach Bill Self and Ochai Abaji. Uh, fellas, these guys are college journalism students. They're local, relatively local, drive-in local. And they attended a USBWA writing seminar this morning. And they're ready to hammer you with Hammers. questions. Okay. Right. So uh, if you guys have a question, hey, raise your hand. Is hoops he is in the, the house. Group? Is he part yeah, of the he's, group? he's a college student, burgeoning yeah. young journalist that, uh, <laughs> <laughs> joining this group. Uh, we have Hall of Fame Mike Stewart, Jesse Kelsey, right? OJ, I, I want you to know this is Jesse's like 15th or 18th or 20th oh, wow. Final Four or something like that. I mean, he is absolutely amazing. He runs all the crew in the back, gets all Big our time. video out. Big so, time. you know, <laughs> he's, if you want his autograph later or a selfie, he's yes. available <laughs> right after this. Uh, questions? Hands up. All right, let's go up front, and we'll go to the second row. Hello, Maya Taylor from the University of Texas. I have a question for Ochai. Um, apart from a win, what would a perfect game look like for you? A uh, perfect what? Apart from a win. 
What would a what would a what? A perfect game look oh, like okay. for you? Um, obviously, I'm just dominating offensively, defensively. Um, everyone's in sync. Um, you know, we're executing um, every possession, and I don't know, just just flowing throughout the game, uh, just being aggressive. Uh, I think that would just be the perfect game. Let's go to the second row right here. Uh, Darian Carter, Arizona State University. Uh, my question is for Ochai as well. In your Kansas bio, it says you played soccer until your junior year of high school. Has anything from soccer translated to you on for the on the basketball court? Yeah, yeah. There's a uh, obviously you know um, footwork. Um, that's something that translate really uh, translates really well. Um, I noticed when I was playing you know high school soccer and I was keeping up with that that I was also in good shape too. So um, that's that's just a good way to to stay in shape too. Yeah, we have a question in the center of the room. Cole Hernandez with the OSU Reveille. This question is for Coach Self. Uh, Coach, this is your fourth Final Four appearance. How do you plan on getting revenge from the 2018 game against Villanova? Well, I don't know if I consider it revenge as much because it's, uh, uh, you know, different players and, and obviously different teams. But but the way that they the way that they played that game and, and – uh, uh, certainly has played a, a role in my mind that uh, if we got back to a Final Four, we'd make it certainly uh, different than the way we went out that year. So uh, I guess that's been the motivation as much as anything. But I, I don't look at it as revenge at all. Same area of the uh, section there in the center. Marcus, also from the LSU Reveille. I guess this is kind of a question for both of y'all. Villanova ranks in the top 20 in defensive efficiency. How does playing in the Big 12 where you're going against some of the top defensive teams night in and night out prepare you for a game like this on the stage? Ocha, you want to take this first? Um, yeah, you know, going, going against the, the best defenses um, like that, I mean, you, you learn a lot, um, you know, ways to score, how to score, how to execute um, your plays and sets. Um, so really just keying, on, keying in on that um, going into this game is something that's going to be important. Coach? Yes. Uh, uh, I don't know that Villanova defensively is, is uh, uh, similar in all aspects the way that some of the, the teams in our league play from a technique standpoint. But from a, from a philo philosophical standpoint, I mean, uh, load up, don't let the ball touch the paint, take away your big. Uh, uh, you know, make you earn everything, uh, make you play five against five. I mean, those are all, from a philosophical standpoint, similar. And I, I do think that our league has, has helped us. It doesn't guarantee anything, but it's helped us play against another great defensive team like Villanova. Question, you want to go, Jesse, you want to go to Texas first? I'm good with either way, Jesse. You're the Hall of Famer. Uh, hi, Carter Yates with the University of Texas. This question is for Ochai. First off, I read somewhere that you live with Remy Martin. Is that true? Yes, I just want to confirm. It's okay. True. So, as this year goes on with Remy, you know, battling injuries and maybe not shooting as consistently as he wanted to, how was he able to stay engaged and what did you do uh, as his roommate, as his teammate to like mm -hmm. help encourage him? Yeah, um, you know, always, obviously been here longer than him. Um, his first year here, so obviously I know more what's what's going on than him. So um, just just giving him advice, um, keeping his spirits up high. You know, when when he's either not out there playing or you know after games when he didn't play or stuff like that. So um, no, he's just he's just had a really good uh, you know mindset and attitude the whole entire season um, through ups and downs, and I think that's you know that's why he's he's being so successful now is because he's just had a he's had a really good attitude the whole time. Outstanding. On the right. Uh, Ryan Miller, Mississippi State University. Uh, question for Coach. Can you take us through uh, what you said at halftime to get such a turnaround against Miami? Uh, yeah, I don't – I really don't think I said that much. Uh, uh, I was disappointed uh, not in so much in the score. I was disappointed the first half because I thought that we played on our heels uh, as opposed to being the aggressor. And so all, all we did was just challenge our guys to – that, uh, uh, you know, we can guard these guys, we can certainly play better, but we've got to be the in attack mode as opposed to kind of receiving every blow. And so uh, second half we went out and, and uh, it wasn't anything that was said that they listened to, it was more of a mindset that we went out and, and played with. All the way up front. Uh, Christina Huang, Texas. Uh, this is for Ochai. Um, so what do you think are some of the best aspects about the culture at Kansas? 
Um, some of the best ac aspects, I would say, um, you know, just the support, um, support system around Kansas, around the program, around the university um, is, is unlike, uh, you know, other, other schools. So um, there's that. And then obviously, I mean, the support goes a long way um, with the fans too. Um, them traveling here, obviously we just had our open practice and there was a, a great turnout there. And it's always fun to, you know, um, do well for the, for the fans because, you know, they support us that much. Go to the center of the room, four rows back. All right, this is uh, Henry Huber from the Daily Reveille. Um, That's LSU, guys. Yeah, LSU. Um, hold on. Sorry to mess you up. Yeah, no, 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 you're, you're good. I'm not, yeah. Um, I mess so the, uh, this, okay. this y'all have already played two uh, Big East teams so far in, in the postseason, and those two matchups were uh, arguably the, the most tough, I mean, at least in the, in the NCAA tournament. Uh, how, how does playing against the Big East compare to the rest of the, <clears throat> the rest of y'all's postseason and perhaps conference play? Well, you, you're, you're, you're exactly right. Uh, you know, Creighton was obviously a, a very tough out for us. Uh, they played great, uh, and they were coming off a, a game in which uh, uh, Ryan was hurt, and so they weren't at full strength, but so they just let it go. Uh, Providence really labored against us the first half, and they played unbelievable second half, and we had to make some plays down the stretch. So if anything, I think that those two games will prepare us just how tough or just how tough this game will be and, and, and even tougher. So uh, uh, we certainly they, they certainly got our respect if, if those two teams uh, uh, struggle with Nova during the year because uh, Providence lost to them twice. And uh, I think Creighton split with them, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe they went two and one. I think they went two and one because they won in the tournament too. Yeah. So, so uh, you know, if you can go five, uh, uh, four and one against those teams, I think that's that certainly has our respect right there. Ocha, you like playing Big East teams? You like the variety of the tournament? Yeah, yeah, the variety. Um, obviously, we we played a Big East um, team earlier in the season, St. John's. Um, so, I mean, three three Big East teams in a year is, I mean, it's you kind of get the best best taste for a Big East conference. This session right now is for uh, students that attended the USBWA writing seminar. Any further questions from you guys, or we can let these guys go? One more? Two more? Both from Texas. Three more? more? I don't think we have time for three. We can maybe get, we can get uh, one and a half in. Hey, this question for Coach Carter Yates from the University of Texas. Coach, Jay Wright complimented y'all on your dead ball situations and your team's intelligence. Uh, just now vice versa, what, uh, what about Coach Jay Wright and Villanova is sticking out to you on the tape? I, th I think the biggest thing is, is they have a, a system in place that they all play to. Uh, they know their roles. They're, they're unbelievably well drilled and, and uh, disciplined. Uh, and, and uh, they, they play a style that I think is advantageous for them because not too many other people play that style, uh, which makes it harder to guard, uh, so to speak. So, uh, you know, I, I do think we do, our th we do some things relatively well, uh, and I know they do a lot of things very well themselves. Final question up front. Christina Huang, Texas. Um, since you guys are the last team from the Big 12 left in the tournament, have you heard any messages of support from the other coaches in the conference? Yeah, our, our, our coaches all pull for each other, at least uh, verbally uh, uh, and, and through text very, very well. Uh, I actually think Scott Drew has been a great advocate for our league and what he did on CBS uh, uh, last weekend. I thought, I thought it was great. Uh, uh, and he's certainly a team player. Uh, with our league, so, but yeah, the coaches have been supportive. I mean, we've all got our own things going on that that are, that are very important to the success of our program, uh, even if not playing at this particular moment. Moment, but yeah, I, I do think our league definitely pulls for each other. I want to commend you guys on another great session. We want to thank Ochai and Coach Self for joining us here and giving us this opportunity, fellas. Very sad news: no more media until yeah. oh, after yeah. tomorrow night. <laughs> Rather Thank deal you with guys. you guys anyway, so that's much better. No, All right. Thanks. Thank you guys. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Thank you guys for doing this. Good luck, Coach. We'll see you. Uh, Duke student athlete uh, breakout sessions are still happening right now. Coach Krzyzewski joins us here at 1.30, uh, followed by 
Duke student athletes with Coach Shashevsky at 140.
We'll be joined momentarily by Duke head coach Mike Krzyzewski here in the main interview room. Coach Krzyzewski will be here from 1.30 to 1.50, 20 minutes and 10 minutes into that session. Wendell Moore Jr., Mark Williams, and Paulo Bencaro will join us as well. We'll take questions for Coach K, and we'll take questions for Coach K with the student-athletes, and we'll take questions for the student-athletes as well. Wendell, Mark, and Paolo as soon as they arrive. <clears throat> Your reminder right now to please silence your cell phone. I'm going to check mine. Please turn your flash off. You're allowed to take still photos with your mobile device. You cannot go live or record any video with your mobile device. Just a reminder. Or with any other video recording device, handheld cameras, mini cameras, etc. If you need satellite coordinates, you can get it from me or you can get it from any of our outstanding staff members from Hammond Communications toward the back of the room. Duke head coach Mike Krzyzewski is next. Okay, I did. Is it those three? Okay. Okay. A special surprise, a little change in the schedule. Wendell Moore Jr., Mark Williams, and Paolo Bencaro are here now as well. They're going to begin this news conference with Coach Krzyzewski. Ten minutes in, we'll ask the student-athletes to step out, and then Coach K will remain for another ten minutes. The way that I just said it? Yeah, very good. Oh, I'm flexible. <laughs> I bent. Did you, hear? Did you hear the one about the... <laughs> It's where we find out how good our microphone stewards are. You guys ready? You guys locked in? Eye of the tiger? All right. Just another quick reminder regarding mobile devices, no video, no going live. You can take still photos without flash. Hoops is in the house. Uh, yeah, they're coming. I think they're coming. I believe they're coming.
once you guys are done, you get time to go back and stretch and get going. Go ahead, Bruce. Yeah, we're in here for uh, 10 minutes. And George, yeah. George and I will hang out. Go ahead, you can just start with this. Sure. We're now joined by Wendell Moore Jr., Mark Williams, Paolo Bancaro, and Coach Krzyzewski. We'll take questions first for the student athletes. Who has a question for any of the Duke players? Raise your hand. Let's go up front. Hall of Famer Dick Weiss joining us here in the front row. Let's get you the microphone, Hoops. Yeah, Mike, Duke Carolina has always been the gateway to ACC championships. This game could be a gateway to a national championship. So what's the difference between the great well, it's rivalry? More, it's more important, but it's not more important because it's North Carolina. Right. It would always be important when it's North, North Carolina. It's uh, the most important because if you win, you get a chance to play for the national championship, and that has to be your focus, and that's our focus. Up front to the right, we have a question for the student athletes. Hey, question for Paolo and Wendell, Brendan Marks from The Athletic. Uh, is Mark the best defensive player that you guys have ever played with, and what is the best part about playing with him on that end of the floor? Wendell first, please, then Paolo. Uh, I would say yes. Uh, Mark is the best defensive player I've played with. Um, and it's, it's really just because he makes my job easier. I got in the perimeter. I, got in, I mean, I know if I uh, lack up a little bit, get beat off the dribble, I know he's going to be there to have my back. Paolo. Yeah, I have to agree. Uh, definitely the best defensive player I play with. You know, you know he gets a lot of credit for the blocks, but I think more the effect um, that I see is just when, just the shots he changes and kind of the fear he puts in the, the offensive players. You know, a lot of players are hesitant to go up. Uh, you know, they pump fake or kick out when usually they would go try and finish. You know, just because Mark's there, so you know it's a big help for sure. We have Duke student athletes for just a few more moments. If you have a question for the Duke student athletes, please raise your hand. If you have a question for Coach Shevsky, you can raise your hand as well. But let's look for one for the student athletes first. Anyone student athletes? We got one in the back toward the center of the room. Let's get you a microphone, sir. Name and media outlet, then your question. Dan Daniel Bell, Black Sports Online. This is for all three of the guys. Um, how tough has it been just trying to stay in the moment and not think about the possibility of Coach's last game, you guys' last game? Wendell first, please, then Mark, then Paolo. Um, I mean, I honestly don't think it's been that tough for us. I mean, because we've been dealing with it all year. Um, it's kind of been uh, uh, kind of been something that's been following us. Uh, I mean, really, every game we play in, um, it's, it's been Coach's last something. Um, so now, uh, the fact that it's the Final Four, uh, we're realizing that it's uh, not only Coach's last something, but it's uh, our last something as a team, because uh, 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 this group of 14 won't be together anymore after this. Uh, so we just, I mean, we just all stay in that moment together. Um, I think we've done a great job at it. Mark. Yeah, 100%. Um, I think, you know, realizing that um, it's our last uh, something is uh, really important. And I think we've learned that, you know, throughout the course of this year. Uh, you know, we've definitely, definitely learned to embrace that. Uh, it's an opportunity a lot of people don't get to have. So just, you know, embracing it and making the most of it. Fella. Yeah, just, uh, you know, staying in the moment as a team, you know, being in the present. You know, at the end of the day, you know, we're at the Final Four and, you know, this is, this is all fun, you know, to us. You know, we don't look at it really as, as pressure. You know, we get to play in front of more people than anybody has. We get to play in the, on the biggest stage in college sports. So, you know, we're looking at it as fun, really. I mean, at this point, I feel like the pressure is kind of out the window. I think, you know, it's four teams left, all great teams. You know, the best one's going to win. So we're just going to go out there and do our best. We have a question all the way in the left-hand section. Royal Howell, Carolina Blitz. Uh, this is for everyone on stage. I just spoke to Trevor in Germany. They both seem calm, poised, and collective, ready to fight tomorrow night. Um, can you just speak on just, has it really set in yet that you guys are getting ready to compete for a national championship tomorrow night? Once again, we'll ask Wendell to take that first, then Mark, then Paolo. Um, I think, yeah, it kind of set in for us. Uh, really, as soon as we got here, I mean, uh, we got off the plane. It was uh, like a whole fancy uh, thing waiting for us off the plane. So we loved that. Uh, I mean, it really just got us all excited from the start. Uh, and then to come in here yesterday, get some shots up in the 
um, in the dome. I mean, it was a great moment for us. Uh, again, just being in that moment. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, ever since we got here, it's been fun and games, uh, but we know tomorrow um, it's going to be a fight. Um, yeah, we're going to be ready for it. Mark. Yes, yeah, it's, it's set in a little bit. Um, I don't think anything will compare to when the game starts tomorrow with 70,000 people in the stands, but um, it's going to be it's going to be really exciting. It's something, you know, I've been dreaming of since I was a little kid. So to be out here is great. And yeah, I wouldn't call it pressure either. It's just an opportunity that, you know, for me to have is pretty cool. And I mean, for for all of us to have is pretty cool. Um, yeah, just what basically what them two said, you know, you know, we're just embracing it all. Obviously, I definitely think it's set in that we're here. Uh, you know, we play tomorrow, so I would hope it's set in. Uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll be ready. We're now going to go to Zoom, and we're going to recognize David Melandra from the Philly Sports Blitz. David, let's unmute you. Go ahead, David. Question for the players: What what has this whole season been like in this run, leading knowing this was the final season for Coach K? And I have a follow up for Coach: Has this team surprised you at, at all during this run to make it to the Final Four? We'll give it to Wendell first, then Mark, then Paulo. Uh, I mean, I really think the season's been amazing. Um, it's been a, a season filled with up and downs, um, highs and lows for us. Uh, but somehow we always find a way to stay in the middle of everything. Um, and these guys, uh, to this point now, uh, we're playing some good basketball. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, we're playing on the last uh, weekend of college basketball of the season. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I think it's been a pretty good season for us so far. Mark. Um, yeah, I think the season has been going um, um, pretty well. Um, obviously, to get to this point, you're obviously doing something right. Um, so, you know, we're really excited. Um, you know, I can't wait for the opportunity tomorrow. And Paula. Yeah, no, it's been a great season, you know, from from the very first meeting we had, you know, getting to New Orleans was was the goal. So, you know, the fact we got we get we got here, um, it's just a big, big testament to the work we've put in. And before we get to coach's answer, we want to thank Wendell, Mark and Paulo for joining us here. They're going to go ahead and stretch and get ready to take their open practice time out on the court. Thank you very much, fellas. We'll let you guys go. And coach, I think the question was. I, 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 under, yeah, I, got, uh, I don't know if surprise is uh, you set high goals for we've set high goals for our program every year. And then the season is about are you worthy enough? Have you earned it? And uh, uh, so surprise is not the word. I, I think we've earned it. These kids have earned it. And uh, as the other three teams have earned it. So I'm just pleased that uh, that we're in this. And, you know, one thing before answering anything, I would I don't know how, if I'll ever get a chance to talk to all of you again. Uh, not that I'm thinking negatively about tomorrow, but uh, uh, I want to clear up one thing. Uh, yesterday I said uh, about the NCAA. Yeah, I think we're all frustrated. And... Uh, that's good, because if you're frustrated, it means, you, you know, then all constituents want change. The thing that I would recommend is that this is a transformational time for college athletics. When you transform, the main thing you transform is structure, you know, organization. The structure we have right now does not work. And so if the transformational committee is geared, I hear these things that they're coming out with all the compliance stuff, that should come after structure. It, it's, and I would take a look at the organization, who's on that transformational committee. I, would, I, I think there are more compliance people on it. Nothing against compliance people. That's part of what we do. This is a time not to look at n nits and bits. It's a, look, it's a time to look at the whole thing. It's a time to look at and see if, do you do something like football and they're under one roof? Do you organize men's and women's basketball under another roof? Do you do that in different segments of the NCAA? Do you have different houses, not try to put everyone in one house? 
Do you uh, have leadership groups for each of those houses? Do they have the, the autonomy then to handle situations at that level that never gets to the big house? Do you then at different times meet together to see what things are happening in all these houses that help everybody? And we're not being like you're being pushed away if we're not looking at you a certain, certain way. Uh, give autonomy to different groups and then bring it all together. It's time to come up with an organization that has not been able to adapt. And so this time is to catch up on all the things we didn't adapt to, but to form an organization that can be, that can anticipate change can forward look and say these things might happen. Do you have a lobbying group with Congress? Do you, you, know, do you establish relationships that are one-on-one -on -one and are not committee-oriented? Like, who does the NBA talk to in basketball for us? They don't know. I mean, I know Adam Silver better than anyone on the NCAA. So who is the Mary, Joe, or whoever it is that spends the whole year. In other words, you have to have these houses that are looking at what's happening in your house on a day-to-day -day basis that has a feel for the constituents that are in that house. And so that you bring, you represent them in a way that is fair and it's an adaptive and we stay ahead of it. That's what I would like. And it has to start with structure. It has got to start, if we don't do it with structure, you're just trying to do the same thing in the same house. I don't understand, I, it's crazy to me. And I'm getting out of it, but it's crazy to me. As a leader, it's the only way to do it. It's the only way to do it. If we don't do it that, and I don't care how you do it, but you gotta you got look at structure and organization. And shared leadership, shared leadership. It shouldn't go up, and little things then go up. You, you know what I mean? To, they shouldn't go up, they should be handled. It's like an army. A squad leader takes care of what's happening in the squad. A company commander takes care of what's, you know, the general doesn't take care of all those things. Because then that general is covered with minutia. That's not minutia at the squad level because it could end up being something big. Anyway, I hope I make a little bit of sense, but anyway, so I'm not blasting anybody. I'm, I'm saying, come on, you know, do this the right way, though. I, I, don't see it, I don't see it happening that way. And the only way you do that is to understand the people on the ground. You have got to listen to the coaches of each of these sports. They represent the players, okay? and know what's happened. Otherwise, you have absent congressmen who never know what the hell's happening in their district. Anyway, I, that's my 40 years, all right, so. Up front to the right. left, let's get a question from Eddie from the AP. Well, Coach, uh, Eddie Pels from AP, and I'm sorry to press this, you mentioned Congress. You know, when Emmert was up here yesterday and for the last year, he seems to be, I mean, the NCAA, in a lot of ways seems to be putting their hands up and saying we'd love Congress to lead us. Is well, that think, a solution uh, yeah, I think way? the way, no, I think the way the world's going, you should have a relationship. You, you should have relationships with all the people that impact sport. So, yeah, and, uh, but we should, and maybe in establishing those relationships, you can put things in place in the future that anticipate change that are brought up by people other than you. That's the way, that's the way you do it, I, I think. You know. On the right side toward the back, Dana. Uh, Dana O'Neill with The Athletic. So on Tuesday, you're gonna have a lot of time on your hands. Um, just wondering if you would like to volunteer, and I mean, in a serious manner at all, would you ever consider being involved in any of this? Not on a formal basis. Uh, I mean, uh, look, I love, it's been my life to be in college athletics. I've had many opportunities to go to the pros, and I've always felt that it's pure, not that the pros are not, but 
uh, they're, well, they're not, but, uh, uh, but they're great. Uh, and so I love college athletics, and, and I love it for all athletes. I mean, all athletes should be rep, rep, represented. And uh, I, if you're going to change, I think, you know, and don't talk to just the older coaches. Like, the younger coaches have a real good feel for what's happening right now with NIL and being guys be, not just guys, but student athletes being represented by agents and the transfer portal. And you know why? They have a better feel for it than me because it affects them. And you should always talk to the people that are being affected by what's going on now, not by people who are retired or people who are just on a committee who don't have, they don't have a feel for it. How do you get a feel? How do you get a feel for it? And you have to talk to, uh, and a lot of the young coaches would be great in this. On the right side, Ian. Uh, Ian O'Connor, New York Post, a bit of a smaller picture question. Uh, Mike, just over the decades, you've obviously seen a lot of first year coaches deal with and handle early season struggles or not deal with them. I'm just curious what has impressed you the most about the way Hubert connected with his players and, and got them to play at such a high level late in the season. Yeah, and thank you for asking that. that uh, Hubert, Hubert's been terrific. I mean, uh, one, there's a lot of pressure taking over a program, the level of North Carolina's with the tradition of excellence that they've had. And for him to do it, he's under immense scrutiny. And they, had, they got knocked back a number of times. I, I just thought, and he, he always had poise, and he, he has great humility. And it, it, it worked together. And he had a belief in his players and in what he was doing. He, he and I did a, a thing together here yesterday, and I mentioned that he's run his own race. He hasn't tried to be Dean Smith or Roy or anybody else. He's been himself in that culture, but he knows that culture. He, he's worked in it and he's played in it, and now he's adapting who he is into that culture. And I think that's a, a great way for a culture to grow. And uh, he, he, he's done a marvelous job. We want to thank Coach Krzyzewski for yep. joining us here in the main interview room. Duke is on the court next. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. See you a little bit, Coach. Thank you. You got it. 